Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. So the first one is, did uh, Christ, what did it say? Did Christ die on a cross or a tree? Did Christ die on a cross or a tree? <clears throat> Give me Acts 5 and 30, because uh, we know where this question is coming from. Because when you read in the New Testament, it's always referring to Christ being hung on a tree. Okay, so let's start right here. <clears throat> Acts chapter 5, verse 30. This is when Peter was getting those uh, wicked Israelites together, man. All right, start at 29. I right, start at 28 to get a little bit of it. The book of Acts, chapter 5, and verse 28. Come on. Saying, did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Right. They tried to say that's their own doctrine. No, that's the doctrine of the Most High God. All right. <clears throat> so this is what Peter said as a rebuttal. Watch this. Come on. Verse 29. Uh -huh. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, uh -huh. we ought to obey God rather than men. The scriptures say we ought to obey God rather than men. Watch this. Verse 30. Mm -hmm. The God of our fathers. The same God of our fathers because they kept trying to tell, uh, they kept trying to accuse Paul of teaching a new doctrine. Okay, and the apostles of uh, teaching a new doctrine. So he says, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus. So the same God that you claim to follow, we're talking about the same God. So this ain't a, a new doctrine. All right, read on. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, uh -huh. whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. So he's cutting them right there. He's like the same God when you read what? Deuteronomy 18 and 18, right? It prophesies. Let's read it real quick. I know we have some new brothers and sisters. So give me 15, eight, uh, Deuteronomy 18 and 15, because <clears throat> I want you to understand the background of it as well. All right, real quick, read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18 and verse 15. Watch this. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet uh -huh. from the midst of thee. So it was prophesied that Christ was come during the time of who? Moses, read. Of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. All right, uh, give me Matthew 17 and 5. <clears throat> Matthew 17 and 5, because it said Christ, that's who was uh, being prophesied of by Moses, that he would come just like him. He would be a leader of the people, and he would come from amongst the brethren. And then lastly, it says, him shall ye hear, okay? We want to see that prophecy come to pass right here, Matthew 17 and 5. The book of Matthew, chapter 17 and verse 5. Come on. While he yet spake. Behold, a bright, bright cloud overshadowed them, mm -hmm. and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, Come on. in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Hear ye him. Meaning what? This is who Moses was talking about back in Deuteronomy 18. So listen to him. Okay? And then give me that in John 5. John 5, because Peter also had to throw that in there, all right, just to show how much... Um, of a hypocrite they were, okay? They say they follow God, but it says all throughout the Old Testament that he was going to send his son for the salvation of Israel, okay? Watch this, John 5, and um, was it 40, 40, yeah, 46? Yeah, I ain't looking at it. Go ahead. 
The book of John, chapter 5 and verse 46. Mm -hmm. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. Right. That's why Peter said that. That's why Peter said that thing right there. Hold that, Losias, and then go back to Acts 5 and 30 real quick. He had to put it, the God of our fathers. Hello? The same God. This is nothing different. Why are you trying to accuse us of teaching another doctrine? That's not what we're doing, and you know that. Uh, read that. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 30. Come on. The God of our fathers. The God of our fathers, read. Raised up Jesus. Now go back to John. Finish that off. John 5 and verse 46. Mm -hmm. For had ye believed Moses. So it's showing the same people who talking about that Peter and the apostles was teaching other doctrines. They don't even believe Moses. That's the thing about it. Y'all never believe. Meaning what? Y'all been faking the funk the whole time. The whole time. Those who sit in Moses' seat, y'all don't even believe what Moses taught. You see that? Read it again. <clears throat> For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. Right. Read. For he wrote of me. He wrote of me. So what are you talking about? This is another doctrine. Moses told us years ago that I was going to come. I'm speaking in the term of Christ. That he was going to come. Okay. Read. But if ye believe not his writings. So if you don't believe his writings, come on. How shall ye believe my word? It's showing a lot of brothers and sisters just don't believe. Like, for example, we ain't Christ. Leaders is not Christ, right? But the Bible says, give me that in Sirach, because a lot of people don't know that. The book of Sirach, chapter 7 and verse 29. Come on. Fear the Lord with all thy soul. Uh-huh. And reverence his priest. Right. So, for example, a lot of people... Um, for example, that's a brother or sister who disrespect the, the man in front of them, right? But then they say, oh, I love God. That's what the Pharisees and scribes were saying. They were saying, oh, uh, we do the will of God. We do the service of God. But Christ was on the scene, and they did what? They had him murdered. So do they really believe in God? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So the Bible's saying right here, uh, with the uh, establishment and the order, the structure God has set up right now, says, Fear the Lord with all thy soul. And he's telling you in the next part after the comma how to fear the Lord. Okay? It says, and reverence his priests. So it's one and the same. Christ said it best. Hey, they hated me, so they're going to hate you. That's just how it goes. Okay? If you're a follower of Christ, brothers and sisters who are listening, understand. As soon as you sign up to give your life to the Lord, prepare for temptation. Just like it says in Sirach, the second chapter, because if you're following the same footsteps as Jesus Christ, you will have issues in the flesh. OK, now let's get back to the topic. Get back to the topic. Let's go to Acts 5, 30. So where is this coming from? <clears throat> Read what you got. Acts 5 and 30. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 30. Uh -huh. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. All right. So why did Peter have to say that? We've covered it. Now it's talking about, says, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Who ye slew and hanged on a tree. Let's go to the book of John 19 real quick. So now we're going to go over um, the history of what he was referring to, which is a testimony of Jesus Christ. Um, he's giving his account of what took place. So give me that. John 19, I want you to start at verse 16. The book of John, chapter 19 and verse 16. Uh, read that. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. All right. So cru uh, crucifixion, <coughs> that was a custom uh, that the Roman Empire did. The Greeks did it. Uh, the Persians did it. So it wasn't anything new on the earth. Okay. Crucifixion, it was for like, what's it called <coughs> when you um, speak against the government? Capital punishment, but treason. Ty tyranny, tyranny, um, treason, right? All of that, all of that. Um, so yeah, let's, it's, it was a known common practice uh, of the crucifixion, that uh, form of punishment. All right, read on. Verse seventeen. Come on. And he bearing his cross. His what? His cross. Come on. Went forth into a place called the place of a skull, mm -hmm. which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. Golgotha. Where they crucified him. Come on. And two other with him. Uh huh. On either side, one and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, 
the king of the Jews. Mm -hmm. This title then read many of the Jews for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. <coughs> and uh, brothers, when you teach in the streets, when you get to that point, or you come across a yaya um, trying to say uh, the name, the name, the name, understand that Christ's name was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. That's three different languages right there. Okay, so you're so stuck upon the name. But even back during the time of Christ, the actual man himself even when he was living, they wrote his name in three different languages. Just to show you the hypocrisy in that, in that foolish doctrine, okay? Uh, but let's continue. Verse 21. Come on. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, mm -hmm. write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Right, so they're mocking Christ. Like when you read up in the scripture, they put on purple and gold to mock him. Because purple and gold, that's a, um, those are colors that represent royalty. Okay, read on. Verse 22. Uh-huh. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. Come on. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, mm -hmm. took his garments and made four parts to every soldier a part and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. So that's a heavy, that's heavy right there. Um, it said they took his garments and made four parts. Okay. Who can show us in the scriptures, brothers, uh, where it was already prophesied that that would come to pass? Yeah, let's read that because this goes into what Peter was talking about, too. He's like the God of our fathers. The same scriptures that we read, it's, it's prophesied. Watch this. Psalms 22 and 16. The book of Psalms, chapter 22 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. For dogs have come past me. Mm -hmm. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Right. This is going into his crucifixion. They pierced his hands and his feet. Read. I may tell all my bones. Uh-huh. They look and stare upon me. Come on. They part my garments. They do what? They part my garments uh -huh. among them and cast lots upon my vesture. So you can go back. <coughs> Just showing you, excuse me. <coughs> Just showing you. The hypocrisy that was going on in that time. So bad to the point where they actually delivered our Lord and Savior up to be crucified. But that was of the Lord. Just like what you see today. The pestilence, the plagues, the betrayal, the disloyalty. All of that that you're seeing right now, that was prophesied as well. So when we see these things, we have to make sure we are in the scriptures. Uh, what is that? Psalms 91. Got to be in the secret place of the Most High. Okay. Let's go back to uh, John 19. Come on. The book of John, chapter 19 and verse 24. Uh-huh. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots but for what? it. what? But cast lots for it. Come on. Whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Silophus, mm -hmm. and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. Mm -hmm. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar. Come on. And put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. Verse 30. Verse 30. Come on. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. All right. So our Lord and Savior, he, 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 he died through the punishment, the capital punishment of crucifixion. All right. So the question today was, was he hung on a cross or was he hung on a tree? It's not one or the other. It's one and the same. Okay. It's one and the same. I'm going to show you that. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 21. All right. But we're also going to show you that um there was a purpose behind it okay there was a, a symbol it was a it's a, a symbol something symbolic behind it um deuteronomy 21 and 22 read that 
The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21 and verse 22. Come on. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, mm -hmm. and he be to be put to Read death. Read it again. Verse 22. If a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be to be put to death. Come on. And thou hang him on a tree. And thou what? Hang him on a tree. Come on. His body shall not remain all night uh -huh. upon the tree. But thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is accursed of God. Stop. It says, for he that is hanged is accursed of God. So, brothers and sisters, if you uh, weren't aware, when it comes to the actual crucifix itself, it was made of a tree. Okay? It's, uh, notice wooden crosses or wooden crucifixes are um, or tr made of, it's made of a tree. Which, uh, wood comes from trees. Okay, when it's talking about hunging from a tree, that's exactly what it's talking about. But now, since we understand that, we want to focus on for he that is hanged is accursed of God. Okay, so as you know, uh, as a direct result of not keeping God's laws, we became cursed as a people. Okay, I say that again for not keeping God's laws, the Israelites became a cursed people. Okay. Remember why Christ was brung. Let's go to John 127. Remember why Christ was uh, had to come in the first place. <clears throat> All right, so let's go to the book of John. Um, not 27, but uh, 20, 29. Read that. <clears throat> the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 29. Come on. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. It says, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Read. This is he of whom I said, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me, mm -hmm. for he was before me. Right. So how did he take away the sins of the world? Brothers, how did Christ take away the sins of the world? Easy easy one. Um, I can't see who's in front of Simon. Okay, you share Uh, Shalom leadership. Um, Christ sacrificed his life um, as the Lamb of God. That's right. That's right. Christ sacrificed his life, meaning he, he actually died in order for the sins of uh, Israel to be forgiven. But now, Yeshua, what, what means did he die of? How did he die? Um, they crucified him on the tree. Right. They crucified him on the tree or the cross. Okay. Now let's oh, yeah. go to uh, Galatians. <clears throat> Galatians 3. Okay. Galatians chapter 3. And start at verse 10. Watch this. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 10. The book of Galatians chapter 3 and verse 10. Uh-huh. For as many as are of the work of the law are under the curse. So it says, for those brothers and sisters... Who are, under, who are of the works of the law, meaning the law of sacrifice, right? It says they are still under the curse, okay? Because the only way you can get lifted from the curse is by who? Let me hear you, brothers. The only way you can get a uh, soldier and tell us what you got. Shalom, leadership, most high Christ, um, You got to believe that um, Christ died on the cross. Exactly. Otherwise, you're still under the curse. And that, hey, you Old Testament Israelites, I hope you heard that. All you Old Testament uh, Israelites who don't want to accept Christ, I pray you understand that. You cursed. You still cursed right now, okay, since you don't want to accept Christ. Uh, read verse 10 again. Verse 10. Come on. For as many as are of the works of the law mm -hmm. are under the curse. You're still under the curse. Read. For it is written. Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. To do them. Come on. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident. So when it says um, that is written in the book, it's, it's quoting Deuteronomy 27 and 26. So brothers, if you don't have it, write that down right there. Okay. If you don't keep all of those, uh, the laws of Moses, you are cursed. Okay. Now read verse 11 for me again. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. So no man is justified by the law, meaning 
you're not justified or your sins are not going to be atoned for if you're still following the law of sacrifice. All right, because remember, the law of sacrifice could not make the comers unto the, for perfect. You got to remember that thing. So the law of sacrifice, that was just to prepare us to live under Christ. It wasn't the real thing, okay? But once he came, that's the real thing. All right, read on. It is evident. For the just shall live by faith. Who's that faith through? Jesus the Christ. The just are those who keep God's commandments, okay? And they shall live through the faith of Jesus Christ. Come on. Verse 12. Uh-huh. And the law is not of faith. The law is not of faith, read. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. It says the man that doeth them shall live in them. Watch this. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. All right, so here's the point. <coughs> it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Uh, Deuteronomy 27 to 26. But listen closely. Read on. Being made a curse for us. How was, how was Christ made a curse for us, brothers? How is, how is Jesus Christ made a curse for us? Uh, brother um, Stephen. Brother Stephen. Hey, Shalom. Shalom. Uh, because the scripture says, uh, curse be every man that hangs on a tree. Okay, explain it fully so everybody can understand. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so by him dying on that tree uh, and him giving up his life, uh, by him being a curse for us, it allows us uh, to live through the faith. Right, right. He broke, he broke the curse because he made himself a curse. Exactly. And that, and that curse was being hanged on that tree. Very good. Uh, read verse 13 again. Verse 13. Come on. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, mm -hmm. being made a curse for us. Come on. For it is written, cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. <coughs> Where is that written? Deuteronomy chapter 21. Okay. Now from there, let's go to um let's go to First Peter's. Yeah, yeah, read that. 21, 2 and 21. Watch this. The book of First Peter, chapter 2 and verse 21. <coughs> For even hereunto were ye, were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, mm -hmm. neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judge, judges righteously. Come on. Who his own self bear our sins, in his own body on the tree. You see that? It says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Now, before we continue this, hold that real quick. Go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Because what Christ did was very, very heavy and selfless. You know, hey, man, we got to, brothers and sisters, I challenge y'all, man, we got to meditate on our Lord and Savior. And we got to meditate on these scriptures and realize how selfish we are compared to how Christ rolled. You got to think, he literally did nothing wrong. Remember, I know he came here for a purpose because that's what, that's what people say. Well, he had to. No, no, he didn't. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do that. Don't act like that you're entitled to the death of Christ. He, he lost his life for you. But, you know, the thing I'm thinking of, I'm speaking as a man, I'm just thinking about me. You feel what I'm saying? Just think about how times we could get selfish, you know, not putting the um the the uh the uh the well-being of others before us. And I'm not talking, I'm just talking about sometimes you get selfish. It happens. Not saying that that's all, always how you think, but just understand Christ, he ain't never thought like that. You feel what I'm saying? He never he never did that one time. He didn't have that moment where he was just thinking about him. It ain't, it ain't happen. You feel what I'm saying? So we gotta meditate. As you know, as we continue to build ourselves up and try, we have to really check ourselves. But watch this. Watch, watch what Christ really did for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Watch this. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. Uh-huh. For he hath made him to be sin for us. You see that? Christ had to make himself be sin for us, meaning he had to be hung on a tree. In order to break that curse, that's how he had to go out, which is most is one of the most agonizing ways to lose your life it's not a quick process uh brothers and sisters okay when the nails are what uh uh put in your hands and your wrist 
and that your body weight is hanging off of that, okay, he did that. Read, read it again. Verse 21. Come on. For he hath made him to be sin for us uh -huh. who knew no sin. Even though he never did anything wrong, he didn't deserve that. I hope y'all understand that he didn't deserve that, but all of us deserve death, right? Y'all got We got to start thinking when we treat our brothers and sisters a certain way, we really got to start thinking about Christ. It's true. If you have the love of Christ in you, you by default, you know who you love. Also, you're going to love your brother. Okay. But think about how you treating your brothers and sisters on a daily and just think about how Christ treated his brothers and sisters on the daily. If we want to really measure up. Now, remember, Christ said, at a, he said in um, 1 Peter, when he was reviled against, if you reviled against, that's somebody who's speaking against you. What did Christ do? Did he go back and forth? Did he do it? No. He took it. Because a lot of brothers and sisters, they like to go back and forth, back and forth. Christ ain't do that, so why are you doing it for? Christ believed in God. That's the thing about it. Christ believed in God. A lot of us, and I understand a lot of us are di at different levels. I'm speaking, I'm t as I teach y'all that are listening, I also teach myself. So understand, a lot of us, we have to come to the realization of the way we live, it just ain't matching up with the scriptures, okay? And we got to continue to build on that. But the first step, you have to acknowledge you have to acknowledge it. The scriptures say, what's that? Confess your faults. Okay, we have to acknowledge that. And then we could, what, actually start loving each other. We have to learn how to do it because we wasn't taught this. We wasn't taught how to serve Christ properly. This is a learned behavior. Okay, you have something on that? Yes, sir. On Really quick, on the, give me First John on the 5 and 20. All right, because what cap is going over. All right, all of us is on the quick to say we love God and love Christ. All right, on the, but how are you treating each other? All right, are you holding grudges? All right, are you bearing false witnesses, lying, treating each other on wrongly? All right, go ahead. The book of First John, chapter 4 and verse 20. If a man say, I love God, uh -huh. and hateth his brother. And what? And hateth his brother. All right, all right and when you're bearing grudges, all right, on, on when you're not... On the not applying, Matthew 18 and 15. All right, on when you're holding on to things. All right, on trying to take it all yourself. All right, on God says, on read it again. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, read. he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother uh -huh. whom he hath seen, uh -huh. how can he love God whom he hath not seen? All right, on God has given us these opportunities. All right, the scripture says offenses will come. All right, on things that's going to come up in the body uh, uh, that will offend you. All right, on how will you handle it? All right, on God has given you opportunity for a blessing or on for you to keep on, on living that wicked life. All right, on to choose the blessing with that brother that you can actually see. All right, on go to him and fix those problems. Uh, but on real quick, on one more scripture, on the Second Timothy 3 and 12, I believe. Yeah. All right, because we it's quick to say we following after Christ and we doing what Christ says, but on the Paul said that persecution's gonna come. All right, are we on the girding up and reading these scriptures, pouring over them daily? All right, on the trying to get our spirits right. On read that. The book of Second Timothy, chapter three and verse twelve. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus uh -huh. shall suffer persecution. Shall suffer persecution. All right, and persecution is headed our way. All right, but we got to make sure we're doing these things on with our brothers. All right, and who we're in a battle with on the daily. All right, and we got to make sure we're fixing these relationships. All right, according to the word of God. All praise to the most high. And another thing, it, this is heavy what the um, captain and officer bringing out. Because if you don't um, love your brother, you, you, you is all the devil. You is all the devil. And the Bible speaks of that. Give me uh, 1 John 3 and 10. Because loving your brother is loving Christ. You're supposed to see Christ in your brother. 
So if you if you got hatred or anything towards your brother, you got hatred for righteousness. You got hatred for God. Read that. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 10. Uh -huh. And this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Who, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. So if you don't do righteousness, you are not of God. But who you is? You are the children of the devil. The children of the devil, read. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Neither he that loveth not his brother. You, if you don't love your brother, you is not righteous. Righteousness is of God. Hating your brother is of the devil. So you have you you had you got the devil on you if you hate your brother. Real quick, um, go back to the scripture David was at. I want to read thirteen and fourteen. Uh, yes, yeah, Second Timothy three, verse thirteen and fourteen. Start at twelve, but we'll read down to fourteen. All right, read that. The book of Second Timothy, chapter three and verse twelve. Uh huh. Yea, and all that will live godly. In Stop. So it's 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 basically giving the same breakdown of what Officer Samson just sprung out: the children of God and the children of the devil. All right. So it starts off with. They that will live godly. So this is the children of God right here. All right. Read verse 12 again. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. All right. So we understand that. Okay. Now watch what verse 13 says. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. They are not going to endure the trials. I'll say it again. The Bible just said, but I'll repeat it. They say evil men. And seducers, seducers are those brothers and sisters who do something called contingency talk. That contingency speak, meaning, hey, you know, hey, you know, they they don't know what they, you know, they don't really know what they're talking about, right? No, don't be listening to them. They, they, uh, God not dealing with them. Or look at what that's, look at that sister, that sister, da, 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 da. that's contingency speak to see if you go and join a tag along and start gossiping. Or start speaking evil or whatever or another doctrine. Or they'll say, you know what? Well, the scripture's really talking about this. Those are the ones when it's saying Timothy 4 about itching ears. Okay? I read verse 13. It says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. They're going to get worse and worse and worse. While the righteous get stronger and stronger and stronger. That's how you'll be able to see the difference. Remember, in the book of 1 Corinthians 11, it says... There must be heresies, right? There must be heresies that go against the doctrine of Christ. So the righteous, they could be manifested when that takes place. All right, so I read 13 again. It says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving. So they're going to be, what, fooling the simple, the young brothers and sisters who have itching ears and don't want to hearken to the leadership that God set up. And then it says, and being deceived, meaning what? That's that strong delusion in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 9 and 10. The most I will give you a strong delusion because you know why? Because you don't have the love of the truth in the first place. Because you don't love Christ. So as a result of that, he's going to give you a strong delusion. So you'll believe that thing. I've seen it time and time again. Brothers and sisters bug out. They bug out because... They now truly believe something that's not even there. And they just, now that's always on their mind. Now you just, now they're just not even around anymore. Hey, I'm going to help y'all out. A key indicator, Bishop already brought this out. I'm just repeating it. A key indicator know, to know that somebody's bugging out when they don't want to do the work of the Lord no more. I'm going to just come out and say it. I'm going to say, especially you new souls, brothers and sisters, the, I know the new people because I remember when I came in. You got that fire. You got that desire to please God. I just want to help. I want to study all the time. I got questions all the time. I just want to talk about the scriptures all the time. But then, after a while, now you notice maybe that brother you came in with, he don't, wanna, he don't even want to talk to his brothers as much no more. Now, going to the Sabbath is burdensome to him. Now he don't have no works. He don't want to do nothing no more. Why am I telling you this, brothers? To help you. To help you. If you ever feel yourself not with the desire to do the work of the Lord, you are almost dead. 
I'll say it again. You're dying. You're, if you don't want to please God and you don't have that fervent spirit, you are dying a slow, agonizing death. That's what's happening to you. you know, they don't believe me. Give me Romans real quick. Give me Romans. Um, six. And um, is it Romans six? No, Romans eight and six. That's what it is. Give me Romans eight and six. The book of Romans chapter eight and verse six. Uh huh. For to be carnally minded is death. Uh huh. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Right, life and peace. Meaning what? You you actually have a life. You're actually bringing forth the kingdom. Remember what the scripture says: keep the commandments and live. That's what I'm saying. You have life. But if you're not keeping the commandments, if you're not putting forth the works, what do you have? You got death. Verse 7. Now it's going to go into that spiritual battle right here. Chapter, uh, verse 7. Read that. Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. That's what it is. So when you see brothers or even sisters diminishing in their spirit, it's because now instead of being spiritual, meaning clinging unto God's words, that old man now crept back up in them, and they're doing what? Waxing worse and worse. Now that old man is starting to take over the person that they were becoming. Okay, read verse 7 again. Verse 7. Uh-huh. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Uh-huh. For it is not subject to the law of God. And what's the greatest law? Love thy brother as thyself. Boom. Bam. Right there. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, it's really not that complicated. You know who complicates it? Us. It's that simple. Malachi 3.16. It said, those who fear the Lord spake often one to another. I'm just telling you, it ain't hard. It ain't hard, brothers and sisters. And my job as a leader, my job is to teach you the Bible so you can be equipped to go out there every day so you don't get caught up in other men's folly. I'm telling you, the truth ain't what a lot of people think it is, man. Bishop said it best. A sister going to email him and say, uh, are all the sisters nice? He said, no. <laughs> what you think this is, the kingdom? No. This is not the kingdom of heaven, brothers and sisters. So stop trying to act like it is. But what I'm saying is stay in the spirit, man. This, this, ain't, you know, this ain't the kingdom yet, but we're trying to get there, man. We're trying to get there, brothers and sisters. Uh, sheesh. We started off about a tree, right? <laughs> uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I want you to go along with what you were just saying, Captain. Give me that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse um, 10. Because when these people get into that hatred, they, they really think they be right. They really think they, they, they um, got a point. They really think going against leadership or going against whoever they're going against, they're righteous in their thinking. Read that. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, and verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Read the verse above it, I'm sorry. Verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Read. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Read. Because they receive not the love of the truth. So it said with all deceivableness and unrighteousness, this is what it's telling you. Because they received not the love of the truth, because they didn't want to keep these laws, what happens? That they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. So they're going to be delusional thinking that they're right and oh, I, I hate him because this, as opposed to following what the scriptures say, Matthew 18 and 15, telling your brother your problem and winning your brother. You're going to be walking around with all that hatred thinking that you're righteous, but God going to cause you to believe that you're righteous when you're 100% going opposing to the Bible. That's all I had, Cap. Let's get, uh, all right, we'll end with this one. Give me Acts 13. Sorry, you know, we do, but you know, it's edifying, you know. So, um, the question has been answered, uh, one in the same, but understanding why Christ did what he did, all right. And 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 I see why we went ventured off because we've seen the love of Christ, how he rolled to his people, and we got to fall, we got to fall in order, and we got to do the same thing, brothers and sisters, okay. Uh, this is uh, Paul's testimony of it. Let's go to Acts 13, 
and verse 15. The book of Acts, chapter 13 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. All right, so this is when he was in Antioch. So the people was repenting daily, man. They was like, hey, you know, we just got done going through the scriptures. You have any exhortation just like when the brothers, when y'all be in a circle up, right? Or whether it be MOV or Camp 101 or just in general. You know, when we just, you know, just talking about the scriptures. That's why we do what we do. We exhort each other. We want to hear something that's going to uh, that's going to be good for our souls today. So, Paul, stand up and give us an exhortation. Let's see what Paul said. Watch this. Verse 16. Come on. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said, men of Israel, uh -huh. and ye that fear God, give audience. Come on. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers. It's like we got to remind ourselves, man, you the, we the greatest people on the face of the earth. You can't ever bring out Deuteronomy 7 and 6 enough. Okay? You, we got to constantly drill that. I mean, we're not black Hispanics. We're the children of God. Read. And exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. And with an high arm brought he them out of it. Come on. And about the time of 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. So he going through the history. Jump down to verse 24. Verse 24. Come on. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. So talking about his coming, who's it talking about? Jesus the Christ. Read on. Verse 25. Uh-huh. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, whom think ye that I am? Uh-huh. I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. And another thing y'all brothers got to see in the spirit. Paul was giving honor to those who came before him. That's what he's doing right there. Yeah, Paul was taught by Christ himself. But Paul still understood these, all these great men, King Saul, uh, David, Jesse, John, all of these people came before me. So I'm giving y'all exhortation. This, ex this exhorts me. These are the men that built me up. So I'm going to talk about them. You understand? Read on. Verse 26. Read. Men and brethren. Children of the stock of Abraham. Come on. And whosoever among you feareth God. Read. To you is the word of this salvation sent. Come on. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not. Uh -huh. Nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, that have fulfilled them in condemning him. Watch this. And though they found no cause of death in him. So now this is leading up to the crucifixion. There was no reason for Christ to be put to death. And I, we harping on that for a reason. So that means what? If there was no reason for Christ to be put to death and he died for us anyway, that now means what? We owe our life to him, right? We owe our life. We are in debt to Christ. We owe our lives to him. And understand what he said. He said, love thy brother as thyself. So you mean to tell me we can't do that? That man died for us and we can't do that? Can we do that, brothers and sisters? Can we do that? All right. I don't want to be hearing no garbage in this congregation about people can't act right. You better act right. You better act right. The Bible tells us what to do, man. We better act right. We better treat each other right according to these scriptures. Read. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired that Pilate that he should be slain. All right. So I just want to, you know, touch on that a little bit right there. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.